Hey everyone, Wolf Lovro here. Today we are talking how the time has finally arrived. Gilliman is crossing the rift. What does it mean? What do we know? Well, let's just dive straight in and talk about it. Keep in mind today we will be referencing events from across the Warhammer 40k lore. So you have been warned, and with that said, let's just jump straight in. Okay. Now, although the latest novel, Gene Father, by author Guy Haley, focuses on the continuing Belisarius Call narrative, we have, thanks to this, gained the revelation that Gilliman's long-promised and wished-for crossing of the Rift has finally come. In a message received by Belisarius from the Primarch, he informed Call that it is the very eve of his crossing of the Great Rift. That the invasion, or liberation I guess, of Imperium Nihilus is about to begin. Now, the very eve of something to me would mean the day or night before. However, I will point out that Gilliman does request Call's most able servant to be sent to help roll out the Primaris technology to the chapters across the Rift. And with that request, he says with a little luck that person might arrive in time. If not, he'll have to follow across the rift after Gilliman. Now, if it was literally the day before Gilliman's fleet departed when he's sending the message, I don't quite know how Gilliman thinks it's possible they could arrive in time to join him. Though I guess warp travel is unpredictable with timescales to say the least. So either way, whether it's the day before or a small period of time before, one thing that's not in doubt is that it has finally arrived. And I'm actually a little surprised we're not there already, as when the 10th edition Leviathan cinematic dropped, we did get the line from Gilliman himself, day by day, we tear Imperium Nihilus from the despoiler's grip. And my first reaction on seeing and hearing that was that we were going to see a bit of a time jump. That with the 10th edition, the rift was already going to be crossed and the campaign well underway. However, that's not quite how it turned out. Maybe Gilliman's real first 10th edition novel will be just that. Or maybe it'll start with the crossing itself. We'll just have to wait and see. But if that cinematic was anything to go by, the Indomitus invasion of Imperium Nihilus will go pretty well, as you may expect with Gilliman at the head, and the success of the first stage of Indomitus, the stabilisation of Imperium Sanctus. There are some other interesting things we know about the forthcoming assault as well. As we just discussed, Gilliman is a little concerned with rolling out the Primaris and reinforcing the chapters across the Rift, due to the fact the unnumbered sons have been largely disbanded. And this is a direct repercussion of that political pressure that Gilliman was feeling, about essentially having a legion under his command. Sure, many of the unnumbered sons were intended to form new chapters, reinforce ones they reached along the way. However, we know there was a lot of discontent among the ordinary humans in position of power. Many figures within the Imperium reeling about Gilliman's wielding of Astartes' power. The fear of the legends of the heresy brought to life, where the Primarchs and the Legions were the ruins of the Emperor's dream and the galaxy which all led to the first stage of Indomitus being ended, Gilliman's Legion of the Unnumbered Sons being disbanded. You do have to wonder if Gilliman originally intended to plunge straight across the rift at the head of that legion, had he not had such ridiculous opposition from the very people he was trying to save. Though in fairness, I guess it's only a ridiculous notion to us, because we know Gilliman. We have been there from the very beginning. 
we have been able to see all of his motivations and actions. We know they are pure. To the majority of the Imperium though, in fact all of the Imperium, he's a name of myth, a figure of a mostly forgotten history. So the reinforcing of chapters across the rift won't be quite so immediate as it was within Imperium Sanctus. The responsibility is going to be largely down to Kavo, or Cuvo as I like to call him. It's going to fall on his shoulders to help implement the Primaris technology to the still surviving chapters. That's all going to take some time. Now Gilliman did also instruct Call to make more Primaris in his final message, though Gene Father highlights pretty well how empty and lifeless all the great holds and halls of Belisarius' flagship are, how his Primaris creating machinery and training facilities are completely dormant and lifeless, having been unused since that very Ultima founding. With that, alongside Call's immediate attempts to get his own pylon system working, I think it's going to take him a while before he has any sizable force able to send to Gilliman. So, Cuvo's role is going to be vitally important, as well as showing the Indomitus fleet's progress across the rift may not be as quick as it was within Sanctus. The reinforcing of the chapters there is going to be a much harder and slower task. So, with the unnumbered suns largely gone, what is Gilliman's fleet or fleets going to be made up of? Well, obviously there will be a vast Astra Militarum and Adepta Sororitas presence. The forces of the Mechanicum too. And in replacement of the unnumbered suns, I'd assume there will be a huge representation of Space Marine chapter forces. Most likely many of those chapters made up from the former unnumbered suns themselves and the Ultima founding, eager to prove themselves and still fiercely loyal to Gilliman. So we could see many newer chapters, previously unknown maybe, and primary specific creations. I would also expect a large representation from Gilliman's own successor line, for obvious reasons. A Black Templar Crusade is almost mandatory at this point when it comes to Indomitus fleets as well. But aside from that, it really remains to be seen. One thing's for sure, Gilliman is not crossing the rift until he is fully ready to do so. Which means the Indomitus presence hitting Nihilus is going to be formidable. Whenever we get the reunion with L. Johnson too, I'd highly expect his fleet of Dark Angels and Unforgiven would be classified as another Indomitus fleet also. However, obviously this depends on their reunion, how independent L. Johnson wants to be. I am very interested to see how this crusade progresses however, as throughout the Dawn of Fire series, We've seen the Indomitus fleet's resupply and replenishment from the worlds it liberates become quite an important story aspect. How not only they really harvest the worlds of most of their resources, causing no small amount of animosity, but how much the fleet's and crusade's success depends on that resupply, on the resources they can find and use. It was quite clearly part of Gilliman's four planning, and that was within Imperium Sanctus, not only the heart of the Imperium, but a realm where warp travel is far easier, and the half of the galaxy far less ravaged by the forces of chaos. Across the rift, within Imperium Nihilus, the worlds Gilliman and his forces will be liberating will be for the most part in a far worse state, far less able to supply the crusade, and many of them will have been completely overrun by chaos, become complete demon worlds. The warp journeys between these systems 
will be even more trying, more beset by the ruinous powers. Though I assume the Emperor will do what he can in that regard, as he did before Gilliman's fleet in Sanctus. But this combined element of no longer having the vast numbers of the fresh Ultima founding, no longer having as many worlds able to refill Militarum numbers and resources, it definitely is all adding up several elements of intrigue, and truly increasing the difficulty before Gilliman's next stage. Though of course this is Gilliman we're talking about here, the greatest strategic planner in history. If anyone can pull it off, it's him. Though we do have to say the fact he is heading into a large degree of unknown, of uncertainty, must be a factor. Now, we also quite possibly know the place of Gilliman's commencing invasion, thanks to the events of the Dawn of Fire installment, The Martyr's Tomb. Within this, Gilliman dispatched rogue trader Katzler Helvinter to find a new stable route across the rift. You do not know what I will ask, Gilliman said. Yet perhaps that is for the best. I have considered your previous findings, and I concur with your assessments. Of the many routes possible, only the Nackmund Gauntlet is known to be stable, though treacherous. The Drady's Gap is lost to us, comprised by enemy action and unreliable at best. Other crossings are similarly fraught, suited for only the most desperate of transits such as the Straits of Epona. What I require are stable routes, those capable of ensuring the mass movement of men and material. You must have some notion, she began, some sense of where to start. You cannot expect me alone to map the entire rift and find your stable routes, if they even exist. He chuckled, like the rumble of a landslip, like the cracking of sea ice. I do not expect that, no. He gestured and a hololithic map sprang up from the desk, rotating gently, a study in brilliant emerald and hateful scarlet. You will be but one of many crusade elements, retasked torchbearer fleets and those individuals whom I have deemed worthy of personal service. He smiled gently. Agents from amongst my historitors shall be compiling records of previous warp anomalies and immaterial dead zones, where we can map the skin and muscle of the galaxy as it was. Then we can judge to what extent the galaxy's bones have shifted. So, though we don't know all the other pathways or routes that have been found, we know that Katzler ultimately discovers a route known as the Attilan Gate a route that opens and closes with the tides of the rift, on what appears to be a stable pattern. With all the other routes contested, watched by the forces of chaos as Gilliman stated, it certainly seems that this Attilan Gate could well be Gilliman's staging point, his crossing of the Rubicon, so to speak. We could even see it built up to become a fortified bastion for the Imperium, a stable beachhead to which supplies and resources can be constantly passed through. And thanks to the appendix in the Martyr's Tomb, we could possibly know Gilliman's initial gambit as well. As within there, it states Gilliman's desire was to cross the rift via the Attilan Gate, and use that to assault the larger Nackmund Gauntlet from both sides. Now, the Dawn of Fire series is filling in the details of the Indomitus Crusade gone by, so it may not reflect Gilliman's current intentions or thinking. However, it's certainly possible. And it definitely feels like it's been setting up for something big. So, it appears an absolute certainty that the Attilan Gate is going to be the first beachhead. And the Nackmund Gauntlet could become the real push and launch point once it is liberated. 
These are the kind of moments I really miss seeing the old school maps of the galaxy we used to get. We don't seem to get them as much anymore. And I can understand why with changing events and narratives far more than the setting used to see, but it would be great to see where the Attilum Gate actually is in the galaxy. Where along the rift it is. So we can see where the beachhead assault is going to be. How it's located to the Nakmund Gauntlet. The Rutan region Gilliman's forces will be pressing along. Now, I have gone back and checked the galactic map in the 10th edition rulebook and the previous 9th edition, which does show an Attila system within Imperium Nihilus, located out to the galactic east, more or less due north of Macrag. We still can't say where the Attilan Gate will turn out to be, but considering it's named after its nearby system, it certainly appears it could be within this region meaning Gilliman's forces are going to have to fight almost the full length of the rift to assault the rear of the Nakmund gauntlet. That would be quite the odyssey. And there could be a clue in the 8th edition rulebook, where the map showed not only the Nakmund gauntlet over to the west, but also one close to the region north of Macrag and Attila, named the Temporary Rift Corridor. The name certainly seems appropriate for the gate's shifting accessibility. Though again, in truth, we're just going to have to wait and find out to be certain. Only time will tell. But it's just fantastic that we've reached this point. You can really feel the ante being upped. Like the calm before the storm on the horizon. Maybe it's just me, but I can just feel myself getting the bubbling excitement thinking about it the next big stage in Gilliman's Gambit. We know the time has arrived. We know Gilliman's going to face struggles across the rift in several ways. No longer a plentiful supply of Primaris to hand out to the beleaguered chapters across the rift, meaning a longer resupply time for those chapters to be installed with the technology and create their own. A process which is pretty largely depending on Belisarius' assistant Cuvo, making him a hugely important part of Gilliman's plan. Supply in general is going to be harder to come by, meaning more pressure on any supply routes Gilliman can establish. Nihilus is far more the heartland of the enemy than Sanctus ever was, with Chaos having had time to truly embed and set up their own empires here meaning a much stronger resistance of the enemy. We know where Gilliman's initial assault will come, the Attilan Gate, and that he intends to immediately assault the Nakmund Gauntlet from the rear, hopefully establishing a true fortified stable crossing for the Imperium, in many ways possibly making a new Cadia. And of course, the one thing we haven't even mentioned, We've got the lion out there at the head of the Unforgiven, all getting one step closer to the pivotal reunion. Think how pivotal and defining the first stage of Indomitus was. And now we are here again. The galaxy, the galactic map, could well be about to change again. The forces of chaos are about to face the wrath of Gilliman, Rabute is about to find out he is no longer alone. The people of Imperium Nihilus are about to find out the Emperor has not forsaken them. And he will always protect. But as always everyone, what do you think? Are you as excited for me for the next stage of Gilliman's Indomitus plan to finally be unleashed? Do you foresee those extra struggles across the rift becoming larger problems as the crusade continues? Do you think the supply of the fleets could become strained? Or do you think the ultimate planner Gilliman will ensure those supply routes are implemented and protected? Could it all hinge on freeing Nakmund from the enemy assault? Could that be the linchpin for the supplies the Indomitus fleets need? As always everyone, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Huge thank you to all my subscribers, your support truly means a lot to me, it really does. 
If you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. And if you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too? But with that said, I am off, and I'll see you all again real soon.